Okay, so I want to preface this story uh, by saying I am not a misogynist. I, I, I don't discriminate and I am a decent human being. I guarantee you everything I'm about to say will be logically sound and not racy at all. Also, this story is technically a part two. So to get caught up, click that eye icon on the top right to find out. But here's a quick recap for uh, everyone anyways. Parents are very strict on me to not have a girlfriend, else I suffer dire consequences. But out of desperation and opportunity, I got one anyways, which I actively hid and lied about to their faces. Until I left my phone at home, leaving them to see all my self-incriminating evidence. Now I face death in the face with nowhere to run and nowhere to turn. So my mom looks at me and asks, Do you have something to tell us about who you've been texting? Oh god, okay, a, a brain, brain, a, what should I do? Like, should, should I lie? Kurt, you can't lie. They've obviously seen the messages. Just be a good person and tell the truth. Okay, you're right, you're right, you're right. I'll, I'll say it, I'll say it. Um, she's my girlfriend. And then there's this, this strong silence. Should have just lied. But B, you just told me not to lie! When have I ever been right about anything? Oh God! Who am I kidding? Like, what did I expect? For them to say, oh, okay, and, and leave it at that. So as I panic, my mom starts opening her mouth and I prepare my body for the verbal assault. Oh, okay. weren't mad. But essentially, we just had a conversation about me not having to be afraid to tell them things and having honesty between us. And if I didn't, my ass would be grass. As in, they'd probably whoop me so hard I would eviscerate into a fine brown powder and be used as fertilizer. Which I totally heard and internalized and the situation never happened again. Kinda. Now, I didn't really explain Allie's personality in the last video. In fact, I don't even think I said her name. My bad. And, and like I said in the last video, uh, this was happening in middle school. And, and let's say my values when it came to why I uh, dated girls were um, a little different than they are now. Meaning my biggest concern wasn't exactly her personality, like at all, like at all at all. Like if she ate pencil shavings, but was still an eight, I don't think I would have cared. Again, I want to reference the beginning of the video. Like we vibed on like, like two things, which in middle school was actually pretty good. But I think it was because I was kind of suburb and she was kind of like hood, which is fine, which is fine. Again, the beginning, that kind of graded on our relationship a bit. And it gave me this anxiety that like she wanted to leave me. And I wanted to make this work. Like I didn't care that we were from different places or that we weren't a compatible match whatsoever. It didn't matter. One day that all came crashing down. All right, so one day I was at this track meet getting ready for a race. And throughout the meet, I was texting Allie, you know, the usual shtick. But today things just kind of felt off. She hadn't texted me in the morning and now that she finally was, she was hitting me with these two or three word responses, which if you've ever texted anyone uh, ever, um, is a clear indicator that you're either A, incredibly boring or B, incredibly screwed. So after I warm up for my relay, uh, I gotta go check into my exchange. But I figure I should check my messages one last time just to see what she has to say. So I open my phone and see a boyfriend's greatest. I have to tell you something, dot, dot. Like no one puts dot, dot, dot to be fanciful, dog. Like clearly you're about to drop a bomb. But I was really thrown off because I'm about to go run and you send me this message. Like I, I don't have time to text you back. I don't have time to see your response. So I end up going to the starting line for my relay looking physically and, and emotionally abused. Like even the people I was racing against were looking concerned. Like not not like not concerned that I beat them, like concerned that like maybe somebody died. Okay, now I don't remember how well I did on my leg. I was the starting leg, but knowing how um unfocused, uh, sad, emotionally detached I was from my soul, body, and reality. I'm sure I did pretty good. But really, all I remember after finishing my leg was immediately returning to the starting line. Like, to get back to my phone and bury this for good. So I reach down for my phone and, and check the message and, and slowly open it. And it reads, I got in a lot of trouble. My phone's going to get taken away. Oh, thank God. The boy was so relieved. But I mean, like, like anyone, I was kind of intrigued. Like, why was your phone getting taken away? Like, what'd you do? So naturally, I asked her, <laughs> so what was, what was the reason? 
that's when my world took like a whole 360. There was a reason Allie hadn't answered any of my texts in the morning. It was because she was detained. In a wall, but, but detained. Because apparently she had stolen a, a pair of sweatpants from Old Navy. Now at this point, I start to go blank. And not because she stole. She could have killed someone and I probably would have helped her hide the body. I went blank because of my parents. Because I know my mom and dad, they are like the Stalins of, of parenting. But with a little less socialism and a lot more being black parents, I'd have to lie and, and hide it from them. Because if you know the whole your ass is grass conversation, do I go back on my word and, and hide this from them and potentially get caught? Or do I tell the truth and, and get forced to break up with my first girlfriend? And this is where I have to pause because the story from here takes two paths. So I talked to my parents about this whole ordeal like a couple months ago and they said they remembered it completely differently than I did. See, what I remember is that I decided to keep hiding it. And like I thought would happen, I got caught. But what they remember is me telling them, which I don't think could have happened, but I vividly remember not getting punished. So it's actually a real possibility. But regardless of the scenario, I ended up in a situation where I had to break up with Allie. And I don't remember how she responded, but I know it wasn't pretty. And when we finally met IRL um, a couple months later, well, that's a story for another day. Yo, hey, don't don't close the video yet. I got a quick question well, for newcomers. Uh, you should subscribe, isn't that great? You should subscribe. And for everybody, do you want to see more story videos or should I do more not so clear analytical social commentary type stuff like, like before? I, I have a poll, so vote on that. Love you guys, I I'll try to be back. Uh, if you want to know where I'm at, follow me on Twitter. Please like it, please share it up, and please subscribe. I'm out of here.